Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome to our live chat with Dr. Penner as we uh, talk about how to cope with chronic back pain. How are you going, Ron? Oh, well, thanks, Musa. Thanks for asking me to participate. Thanks yes, for joining us. Pleasure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to have uh, a bit of a conversation here. Uh, I'm going to tell a story about what I went through uh, with my uh, with my back. Uh, I didn't have a history of a back problem, but uh, five years ago, uh, unfortunately, I went through, it's actually nearly six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, yeah, it's close to, anyway, so I went through uh, a difficult time and uh, and uh, Dr. Penner was uh, on that journey with me. And so I'm just going to just go through uh, some of my experiences and then we're going to go through a whole heap of things that, uh, that, uh, that I experienced, which uh, you may be experiencing as well. And so uh, if you recognise this fellow, uh, he was actually on... Uh, the Manush video. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, Vera is a funny girl, isn't she? <laughs> you made her do that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, we're just referring to uh, the bloopers uh, where uh, Vera couldn't control herself and she did a hair swing on the video. Uh, Ron's actually the one who told her to do that. Anyway, that was quite funny. Um, and uh, thank you, Vera. It was a great video. Anyway, so uh, what I'd like to talk about first, and just give a brief uh, rundown. Uh, so back around uh, mid-June 2017, uh, I was working for another company, uh, and there was a bit of a reason behind that. I won't go through the details, it's a long story. So um, I left my renovation business, and, uh, and I worked in this warehouse, and I was working on my own, uh, starting a business for, for a couple of guys. And uh, I did a lot of heavy list lifting for about one year. Uh, and so uh, I didn't have a history of back problems and I didn't understand uh, what was going to happen to me. So um, I put my resignation in uh, around May uh, 17, but it took a while to find someone to actually take over my role because it was quite a detailed role. And so um, uh, about two weeks before I left, uh, so it was about two months later, um, I experienced a, um, what they call a foot, that's not a foot drop, I experienced a uh, back pain uh, and I didn't understand what it was. And so I tried to work my way through that, uh, through the day and I couldn't literally walk and I thought uh, this is really bad and I thought it was because I was at a warehouse, it was winter time for us, uh, I thought I'd uh, probably pull the muscle in my back. I wasn't sure what was going on. So then I went and saw a couple of customers, made some deliveries, um, and by two days, I was literally not able to walk. I left the business a week later, two weeks after from that injury, and then I went back into my renovations business. Um, but I wasn't able to work, and I had other people doing the work for me. Uh, and this is now three and a half weeks after that event, I experienced what they call foot drop, uh, where my left leg, from roughly about the knee downwards, uh, was paralysed or became paralysed. It was a slow paralysed within a, about a two or three hour period. Uh, first, my foot went totally cold and it was winter time. So I thought, and I'd always wear double socks at that point uh, because it was so cold. And, and, um, and I walked up the street and back just trying to warm my legs up, not knowing what was going wrong with me. And by the time I got back, I actually fell. I fell onto my car. It was only a very small walk. I went inside the house to continue renovating. I had my son there who was uh, helping me. And I literally fell on my son as I went in the house. And uh, then I rang Dr. Penner, who knew that I was struggling, and he did actually say to me, you need to come and see me. And I didn't because I was just so busy trying to start my renovations business back up. And I was self-medicating for that three and a half weeks. Uh, if you remember, Ron, I was taking painkillers. Uh, I have a food allergy as well, uh, and I constantly have – uh, or I have on here, prednisone, which is an anti-inflammatory and antihistamine. So I knew that would help me because uh, I'd been taking it for, uh, for my allergies. And so whenever I took it, it would help. So I was taking that for three and a half weeks with painkillers and also Nurofen. Uh, but it progressively got worse to that day, uh, and that was on a Monday. So then I uh, rang Dr. Penner. Uh, he said, you need to come in urgently. My son luckily was able to take me to the practice. Uh, and just clarify that uh, Ron is actually a GP. Uh, first call of protocol is you've got to go to your GP if you've got some issues with 
uh, in this particular case with back, back problems. Uh, and I would definitely say don't leave it to the last minute like I did. So I went to uh, Ron, he gave me uh, uh, orders to go to um, a imagery uh, yeah. CT, CT scan. Yeah, yeah. So I got a CT scan that afternoon. The next day, urgently, they gave me a cortisone epidural, so in the spine. And it was in my lower back, so it was the, L, the lumbar section. So uh, in this case, it was L3, 4, L4, 5. Uh, that was the damaged area. So uh, I then um, got the cortisone. I did not react to the cortisone. It's supposed to have some kind of reaction in 20 minutes. I had no reaction at all. 24 hours later, they had another cortisone, another epidural. Didn't work. Rang Ron. Actually, uh, yes, I think Ron rang me. Uh, yeah. They rang you and said yeah, there's a problem. It was, you know, it was making the pain worse, actually. Yeah. It's a bad sign. Yeah. So it's then pressure. I was rushed to hospital. Yeah. Luckily, I had two of my sons on the second day. Uh, and they helped me because I, but my right leg was also starting to feel very weak. So the compression in my spine from the disc that had ruptured had collapsed or cr crushed my nerve system uh, and quite comprehensively. Even now, as Ron knows, there's a big dent in my spine, so you can see a bit of a curve. It has not come back. Uh, so then I uh, went to the PN hospital. Uh, Dr. Davidson saw me, and it's funny, if you ever go into emergency, you know you're there for hours and hours. In my case, there was no hours and hours. I was rushed in straight away and seen the doctor pretty much straight away because they knew that this was a serious problem and they knew uh, what would be the outcome if they didn't look at me straight away. So then Dr. Davidson uh, did an MRI or had a, uh, ordered an MRI and I had that and confirmed it after they did all these physical tests with me, which were very uncomfortable, if you understand what I mean. Uh, and then... Uh, they did settle my pain, by the way, so I was able to relax for the first time in three and a half weeks. Uh, and he said that uh, Dr. Davison then gave me the news, which was a bit of a shock. He said, we need to operate urgently uh, or you will have permanent spine injury, which means from the waist down, uh, I will have bowel problems, bladder, bladder problems. I will be paralysed in both legs. Uh, and so it's quite serious. And so you can imagine uh, there was no time to think. I just accepted it and, and we did the operation or they did the operation the following morning uh, and, um, and, uh, and 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 uh, it was success it was a real good success uh, the doctor said to me dr davidson he'll let me go home if i can walk now the problem is uh, i was not able to walk for another one and a half weeks i was actually still paralyzed thank you thanks mary and by the way so i'm just going <laughs> to <laughs> This is my daughter, Marion, who was on the uh, last video on how to make a skirt. Uh, so I thought I'd just uh, a bit of an intro, uh, but she's very shy, so she doesn't want to talk. But at least say hello, come on. Hello. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Marion. Is that, I'm the mama, am I? <laughs> That's the, the best one we could find for So huge. Sorry, Ron. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, so we had the operation, had the... Uh, I was still unable to do to walk. Um, unfortunately, I still had bowel, bowel issues and bladder issues, um, and, uh, and but the pain was completely gone, completely, because they put a pain blocker in my back, which lasted a few days, and also I was heavily medicated with Targin. Yeah. Uh, actually, at that point, it wasn't Targin, it was Endo, yeah. Endo which is the same thing, yeah. but yeah. Targin is, I believe, a slow release. Yeah. Yeah, and it lasts for roughly 12 hours. Yeah. Now, Targin... As far as I understand, is an opioid. They're both. Yeah, endone. They're both. Yeah. Endone. And so, if you are on Targin or Endone, um, I feel sorry for you because I know what it does to you mentally. Uh, it actually stops you from concentrating properly. So you can imagine, and some people get hooked on Targin because of the pain level that they're in, and that's a real danger. So you, if you are on Targin and you're on very heavy doses, uh, I, I'd really urge you to really look at that. Uh, and I'll explain more as we go further into this. So I'm just going to give you the rundown of what happened to me. Then I'm going to uh, uh, just uh, throw a couple of questions at uh, Dr. Penner. So um, the operation that they did on me was called a laminectomy. They had to decompress my spine, especially between the L3-4. The disc had totally collapsed uh, and they had to clean inside. So had, the only way they can do that is to remove the bone, which is permanent, uh, which means structurally you have some weakness in your back. Uh, but then also there's other problems that are going to occur later on. So the injury uh, recovery time is two years, but I got most of that back in six months. Is that correct? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And both my halves, especially my left, had shrunken. 
So in other words, I wasn't using my muscles. And the biggest danger I found was not using my muscles. So when you go through these kind of injuries, you do actually have to, um, uh, having to say, you've got to uh, keep yourself uh, busy. You've got to, you've got to walk. Uh, I was on crutches for six weeks. So um, I was paralyzed for one and a half weeks, but then one day my toe started to wiggle, which was a great sign. Uh, and then I started walking shortly after that. Um, so after two years, I still have residual nerve damage. And so the problem, what they call my condition is corda equina, which is a Latin word, which means horse's tail, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what that is, is from the nerve system, you have nerves coming out of the spine. So through the foramen, I believe it's called, in the lumbar section. So that could be anywhere in the lumbar. And then as they come through, those bundle of nerves, uh, which looks like a horse's tail, a whole heap of nerves. And those nerves in the lumbar section control the bowel, the bladder, the motor control, and also the nerve pain, the walking, the sensations, everything. And so after two years, I regained at a rough level, probably about 70%, give or take. Uh, and so I still have a residual nerve damage, and I've got to work with that, and I have a permanent uh, structural problem with the laminectomy at the bone table now. Uh, but you've got to work around that, and I'm going to explain a bit more about that as we go through. So, uh, Ron, I've said a lot now. You have. Uh, you were through the whole journey with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, essentially, you, you described what is uh, a very unusual yeah. uh, situation. Most uh, chronic lower back pains with nerve compression don't progress like yours is. Yours was uh, a quarter equina syndrome, which is what you described, which is where the disc protrudes at the back of the spine and pushes the normal nerves that are running down the spine in that canal, and it pushes to a critical level where it, it's uh, it's progressive and becomes more severe quite rapidly once it starts, and where you get the numbness in the near part of your legs, the lower part of your legs, and it, as you say, it can affect blood and bowel. So that's an emergency, but it's it's not common. Okay, yeah. so the, the thing is, that's the kind of symptoms you have to watch out for. Yeah. Uh, and, and the weakness is the hallmark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you had the foot drop uh, and, you know, the bladder and bowel issues, they're the nasty signs. They're the red flags. That's what we call red flags. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the sooner you get to that, the better. You know, so having said that, you know, it's the situation, most people will not go through that. Okay. It's only you know, happened to a very small proportion of people who have. Uh, disc protrusions, which is what you have. But it's not just the disc itself. I believe it can also happen via um, uh, arthritis. It can happen yep. from yep. cancer. Yep. It can happen from a Absolutely. number of different Absolutely. Uh, things. Yeah. I mean, and, and they all can uh, cause the same compression on the nerves, which give the similar sort of symptoms. Uh, so really, you know, from a practical point of view, that's what people need to watch out for is, first thing, that the symptoms don't resolve with simple measures, that they uh, cause ongoing uh, weakness and numbness, yeah. uh, they're the, the, the serious signs especially. But certainly if you're getting back pain, it's not resolving with simple measures after you know, a, a couple of days to a week, yeah. uh, especially if you've never had back problem before. Yeah. That's, that's a, you know, when well, you have people coming in your surgery, and I know uh, Maria's uh, listening right now, um, and uh, I saw her earlier today, and uh, so she, she's suffering a lot as well, but she has a total different condition to me. She, yeah. Hers was exacerbated through pregnancy, I think. Yeah. Um, but what would you do when someone comes into your surgery and, and has a problem with their back? I mean, what, how do you find out what level is their problem? Well, it, it can be very, very difficult. And uh, Marie knows too that you know it's, it, it can be very difficult because it can lots of uh, symptoms can overlap uh, yeah. with depending on what what's actually happening in the back. Uh, when you get symptoms like yours, which are you know quite obviously pointing to a, a condition in one part of the back. It makes it straightforward, and you need to see. You picked it up pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, because man. because yours is you know was quite uh, typical of yeah. compression at that point. With other most back pains are not quite as as uh, sensitive in terms of diagnosis. And you can they can often have like it can be problems with the sacroiliac joints, which are a bit further back. It could be due to the areas uh, in due to arthritis in, in the joints in the lower back, which can cause a referred pain down your leg, which can be similar. To a nerve compression, but it's yeah. not actually a nerve compression. It's, it's funny, people have uh, upper back problems for yeah. their arm motor movements and right, yes. neck. Yeah. Uh, they also have uh, signals coming down to their feet as well. They have. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, well, if that, when that happens, uh, that's 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 very sinister because then you're putting 
pressure onto the spinal cord. So, so they need a decompression as well? Absolutely, yeah, but that's wow. pretty rare. That's, that's called spinal canal stenosis. But that, uh, that's similar uh, to Michael, yeah? Similar, similar to yours, uh, but pushing straight onto the spinal cord yeah. in that yeah. case. Yours yeah. is onto the nerves that yeah. run out from the bottom of the quadricular, as you say. Uh, so, but but uh, you know, in terms of when someone presents with back pain, you have to work through the history, it's the most important thing. And I had no history. history. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But no, you but still picked up pretty quickly. But what I mean, in terms of history of, of the kind of symptoms they have, the yeah. type of pain they have, where it goes to. Uh, and then most people won't need imaging. But you know, if you have certain things that uh, you know point towards something which needs more urgent attention, such as the neurological symptoms, such as you know, the loss of sensation yep. and, and pain in a particular part of the leg yep. um, and weakness, then you need to do the investigations. MRI is ideal, but from practical point of view, they're not going to do Difficult to get MRIs. Yeah, and they're very expensive, yeah. so they tend to yeah. just sort of give you a cat. Yeah, I mean, yeah, cat scan. Cat scan will pick up the majority of things, but it's not quite as sensitive as the MRI. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Corbett just uh, put a message there, he had to put his screen up in brightness. I do apologise, guys, it's a bit of an overcast day. Uh, there's not much light here at the moment. We do have our lights on, um, but, yeah, so it's a bit shaded here. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple more lights on. Um, just put them over here, this one, and this one. Just... Will it work better if you close the curtain behind? Uh, no, no that, the light's coming from the outside. Okay. Wall, I think. Um, actually, you know what? It, because it's, what it's doing is... It yeah, it's... it's Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, let's just try that. Where's that one? Yeah. Just there. Uh, yeah. 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 No, it did work. It's, it's helped it a little bit, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's Thanks, Corga. Okay, so um, that's what I'm putting that for the guys who've just joined. Uh, uh, my name is Musa from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Uh, and welcome. Uh, I've got Dr. Penner here. We're talking about how to cope with. Uh, chronic back pain. So, um, yeah, so we've talked about the injury, we've talked about some of the scenarios. Um, so now I just wanted to just uh, just touch on uh, pain. Now, pain itself, uh, as I found out through my uh, physiotherapists, I know there's an S on the end there because I've gone to a few of them, um, in, and mostly at Nepean Hospital, uh, and hi to the guys, Ryan, Ryan, Isabella, and, uh, and Glenn. Um, and also Dr. Davison, if you're watching. Um, so yeah, pain is a very mysterious thing. Uh, so when you experience a uh, um, some kind of trauma or some kind of problem with any injury in your body, the pain will send messages, uh, and uh, which is natural. But after the injury, uh, there's an actual chance that, uh, that that the brain will continually send messages. So you've got to discern whether it's actual new pain or if it's pain that's that's uh, that's been created prior. So it's really really uh, crucial because they feel exactly the same. That's really confusing. Uh, not 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 much is known about this. Uh, Dr. Penner was saying that he uh, doesn't understand much about that. Um, but the physiotherapists tend to know more about this because they are on the recovery side. They're teaching you to deal with pain. Um, and there are doctors as well in uh, in the neurological centre in uh, in the Pean Hospital or private will tell you the same. You'll get pain messages that are not always responding directly to an actual injury. It could be an old injury. So it's really important to understand that. And so from that, uh, the that's similar to the phantom pain when you get yeah. the, you, know, you get the they actually call it like a phantom right. pain. Yes, that's yeah. right. Because the, the brain still thinks it's there. And yeah, the and the messages are still sent. Yeah. And it could be just as real. Yeah. So if anyone tells you you're only imagining it, that is false. You're not imagining it. Your brain is actually sending signals. So it actually hurts. So how do you recover from that? There are a number of options. You need to speak to your GP. I will not go through them because I don't personally understand them fully. I have gone to specialists and they wanted to put some mechanisms in my back and actually locate which nerves are actually sending signals and try to stop that. Uh, I wasn't going to say too much about that, but uh, that is quite complicated. And if you twist or move too fast, you can actually pull that out. Um, and the batteries need changing. Uh, I think it'd be seven or ten years or something. So uh, I didn't go down that path either. So anyway, so the limitations I do have uh, is sitting and standing. And most people with back problems have this issue. But because I have a precondition of oral allergy syndrome, I suffer from a secondary uh, allergy reaction to proteins in fruit and vegetables. And so I am allergic to some grasses and pollens. So, and I have had anaphylactic reaction. So this is quite crucial for me because 
Um, as I said before, uh, when you have a spinal injury uh, that affects your bowels, your bladder, your legs, and that uh, food becomes an issue because if you already got problems with food, uh, for me it's quite difficult to work outside of home. Mm. I need to be home all the time or most of the time, and, and I generally don't eat outside of home. I will eat out of home uh, if it's not a long trip back home or if it's safe food. Now, saying that, I've had eaten safe food, and Dr. Penner knows that it still had a, a bit of an effect on me. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, regardless. Uh, so um, I did have my limitations, hence why, and this is the reason why I'm YouTubing, because I have a lot to offer. Uh, I have a lot of experience, a life experience, and I'm sharing it with everyone. Um, I'm doing this as an income. I've, told, I've said this many times. Uh, I am now, and thanks to all of you who have helped, I am now monetized. Uh, it's not a lot of money yet, but as this channel grows, uh, this will become an actual income for me. So thank you very much for all of you. Uh, and right now I can see uh, Korga is on and uh, Korga's done a lot of work to help me here as well. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, but also for Giuseppe, uh, who I haven't seen on yet. Uh, no, Giuseppe is on. Uh, good morning, Russo, Dr. Penner. Sorry, Giuseppe, I missed it. Uh, Giuseppe uh, was on our live chat for uh, beer tasting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so um, the medication that I'm still on now is Lyrica. Now, the reason is because I don't sleep properly. Uh, I'm very sensitive. I've always been a very sensitive sleeper, but even more so now because of the nerve pain. So my feet are always burning, always hot. Uh, and I can't change that. I can I can do things to avoid thinking about them, but they're always hot. So when I'm lying in bed, that's the first thing I think about because they're, they're there. You're, you're trying to sleep and your legs are burning or your feet are burning. And I do have pain down my lower legs and sometimes I have shooting pain. So the Lyrica is to, to reduce that so I can go to sleep. Do you use it all the time though? Yeah, every night. Every night. Every night. I'm on Lyrica. And as you know, you do the I know, yes, yes, yes. I'm on... 20 milligram, but I do take more sometimes. Now, 25, yeah. 25, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. And, um, so it's a very low dose. Yeah. yeah. I need to get to sleep, so I'll take that only. I am not. I don't like using medication. I do have to take prednisone for my reaction to food. That's a no-brainer. I don't want to have, have an anaphylactic reaction, so I take the first protocol, which is prednisone. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I do not take uh, Tarjan yeah. unless I'm taking uh, having uh, – some severe pain, pains, which does happen, especially when I'm making videos. I, Ron has said that he cringes when he sees me bending on videos. Some of the things I've seen you do. Uh, that, I like, shouldn't be doing it, but I do because I want to make videos, okay? so That's an important point to make, though, that you're only taking time when you really have to. Yeah, yeah. Not, and that's what really we cool. call PRN bases, when needed. Because yeah. if you take it all the time, it's going to stop working for you. Yeah, and you take it higher doses. That's right. And you take it higher and it becomes yeah. less effective. Yeah, yeah. And, and let me tell you, Tarjan just messes with your head. It really does. I just don't like it. I don't want to take Tarjan. And some people become hooked on it. Uh, really be careful of that stuff. Uh, Lyrica doesn't have the same effect. You don't. Well, it's, it's, you're also taking low dose. Yeah. And, and it's targeted to nerve type pain, yeah. which is why I, I think it's it's okay to do take that. Yeah. And you're taking it at night time. So during the day, you, you've got nothing on. I still have brain fog because yeah. of Lyrica. Yeah. Okay. And it, 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 it lasts 12 hours. Is yeah. Exactly right? I still have brain fog. And, and I've got to tell you, it. it I am very sensitive to medication, yeah. hence why yeah. I'm not taking yeah. high doses. Yeah, yeah, I've always been, high dose. yeah. yeah, I've always been sensitive to med medication. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I take uh, Lyrica only when I have to. I still take my prednisone and I will take um, Nurofen uh, when I feel. But Nurofen itself, is that a... It's an anti-inflammatory. Anti same as like prednisone, really. It is, but very mild compared to prednisone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I take, I'll take take Nurofen before I take prednisone. Yeah. Do yeah. so you take prednisone for your back pain sometimes? No. No, I was going to no, say. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not. Sure. I will not. I'll only take... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, no. When I was self-medicating, when I had the yeah, injury, I, I, I was doing that. Yeah, yeah. And which is not something you should. It's do. not. It's not advisable. Seriously, not advisable. So, anyway, um, so yeah. So, uh, how, how do you find with patients trying to medicate themselves? Do, 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 do you find that they're not so? How can you say what's the word for? Do they don't have as much fortitude? Where they just give in to themselves and they take oh, the medication? Oh, look, certainly the, the temptations there. If you've got something which will relieve the pain immediately. Something especially along the lines of endone, uh, if they're given something like that, then there's always a risk that they'll take it, uh, abuse it really, because it works pretty quickly. 
Um, and so it gives you an instant hit of, oh, I feel better. And yeah. so they'll take it doesn't last long. It's not like Tarja. No, it doesn't. It's like four six hours, which is why I tend to not use it again because it's much more addictive using it that way. It is addictive. Okay. Quick, quick. And, and, and yeah. the thing is uh, also uh, Endone is notorious for uh, giving you constipation. Yeah, well, yeah. Hence why I needed to go to Tarja. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with my bowel problems, the yeah. last thing I need is to have constipation yeah. because and then I go through a high low cycle. Yeah. And I've, it, it took me if I'm wrong or right, but I've observed people taking um, both those medications, they put on weight. Um, I haven't really noticed that. I mean, I assume maybe it's, it could be a secondary thing because you, you tend to be you're taking that kind of medication with less mobile, and so yeah. okay. the productivity you tend to aim weight with it. Yeah. But uh, the, the important thing is that you, you remember that. Taking opioids doesn't is not a long-term solution. If anything, it makes the pain worse with time. So it's good short-term, like you said. You know, after you had the went to hospital, you had the first night's rest for ages because oh, yeah. they give you analgesia. It's yeah. important to give it at times, but only short-term. You yeah. can't use it long-term. I've got to be honest. It felt good. Yeah, felt That's good. Which is what everyone does. They say, "Oh, thank." I had a relief of that. It was four weeks of massive yeah. pain. A pain that. Unless you go through it, it's actually hard to explain. You literally, no matter what movement you make, you're in pain. If you lie on the couch, lie down, lie on the floor, stand up, sit down, no matter what angle you're on, you're in pain. And that was literally four months, four yeah. weeks of pain. Yeah. Uh, and I found a really an eye open. I've never been through that much pain. See, and sometimes you, you have the more extreme with auto open type syndrome. Yeah. But you know, most people who have this type of pain. Uh, if you, it's often necessary to give some analgesia for a short period. Yeah. In order for them to be able to do the exercise, oh, okay. do the exercise, yeah, they yeah, need yeah. to get better because you can't really exercise and do the activities of physiotherapy when you're feeling pain. When you're feeling pain. Yeah. So short term, things like endone and targent are okay to use, but they're certainly That's important they're important to use. Exactly right. Yeah. They're so, important to use because so. they get you that level where you need to get to. Yeah. So I was going to talk about something else, but actually just going on the back of uh, what you just said there, uh, Dr. Brenner, Ron. Um, just before I go, um, uh, hi guys, I uh, have just uh, hooked in. Uh, to, hi to uh, Corgi's neighbor. Um, yeah, so uh, this is quantum home improvements and we're talking about uh, how to cope with chronic back pain. And um, so yeah, uh, with um, back pain, it's, it's quite easy to fall into a trap yeah. and most people do, uh, where you will get people to do, it, it, your, your family and your friends to do things for you. Now, that's okay because you will be limited. That's fine. But it becomes a way of life. Okay, And so I was putting a lot of pressure on my family, especially my son Marcus, who I really feel sorry for. Um, I put so much pressure on him. And, and, uh, and, and I did sort of, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, uh, put a bit of pressure on him uh, in, in a negative sort of kind of sense. Um, but anyway, regardless, uh, you need to try to do as much as you physically can uh, but going on the back of what you just said, Dr. Penner, so what you need to do is exercise. So the most important thing is, uh, for me, is hydrotherapy. I did all the physios, uh, and I found the one that worked the best uh, was hydrotherapy, hence these uh, paddles here. Um, so I have actually built my own pool in my garage, which is a, an above ground with a heat pump. So I get that up to 31, 32 degree, try to go to 31, that's what it's uh, uh, warranty that yeah. and uh, so I can do hydrotherapy and I tend to do it once a week uh, and that builds the core muscle that I need to give me the strength to do uh, the walking that I do and walking actually is probably the best I've been told by my physiotherapists uh, to build core muscle so you've got to do a bit of walking and the doctor uh, Davidson who did the operation said the exact same so walking is quite crucial <clears throat> but the reason I use these uh, paddles in the water because I use water resistance to create the muscle uh, that I need in my upper chest. So I can't do much. I used to do a lot of bench pressing and, you know, and exercises. Uh, and I enjoyed, you know, a good uh, amount of muscles, uh, you know, biceps, uh, chest muscles. Uh, but now what I do in the hydro pool is I use these uh, paddles and just do water resistance and go as hard as I get against the, wa against the water and create that muscle tone that I need. But you can see here, there's still a bit of flab, but, uh, and Dr. Ben is laughing. Uh, so I do a number of different exercises. Um, and so just doing these exercises, I do uh, 20, uh, 20 lots and three reps of everything. 
Uh, then I do walking exercises. So walking in the water is a warm-up exercise. But if you've ever done any kind of hydrotherapy, it's not about swimming. There's a misconception there. It's actually about water resistance. So you've got to walk against the water. Uh, you paddle. You do steps. Uh, you do twisting in the water. Uh, when you're in warm water, any kind of water, but warm water is quite good for your back and your muscles. It frees you up. Uh, and it allows you in a freeze that it takes the pressure off the spine and it allows you to feel more freer to do things in the water So it actually helps you heaps. I've and that's why I went to the expense um, It cost me I think around about five thousand dollars for the pool and pump um, but I did get a really good price on that and I did use the uh, the iPool uh, the Fitmax iPool 3 um, and the summer wave heat pump and I got a 12 kilowatt system to warm it up quickly uh, so in the winter months, it does take a bit of time to warm that up. Um, but it does work really effectively. So I really do recommend, very highly recommend uh, doing hydrotherapy for me was a game changer. Um, so prior to that, uh, I really was, you know, um, dependent on everyone. Yeah, and I, I think that that's a really important thing. To, to, as I say, keeping active is, is the operative word, and no matter what kind of cause of back pain is, mobility uh, and exercise to build up the core strength. And, and I think I'm a big believer in hydrotherapy because I think, uh, especially to start off, the, because it takes the weight off your body and so you're able to build up that core strength uh, without putting too much stress on your, on your back. And then when you build up a bit more muscle, then walking is great. You can do more. Yeah. You can do more and you, you just build and build and build. Yeah. But you will get to a limit and, and, and you can do exercise in the water. So these, as I said, I do uh, 20 sets of, uh, of those exercises. So there's nine reps. Uh, of exercises, but the most important thing when you first start that, you don't start with 20, you start with like five and you build it up. Uh, so the exactly physiotherapist right. said to me, if the pain, because you will have pain after the exercise, by the way, but it's a positive pain, if I can call it a positive yeah. pain. And so, positive and mental, that's right. Yeah, but you, but also it. positive in the fact that it's a, it's a good pain, yeah. that it's a no pain, no gain. Yeah. Okay? So that kind of pain, not, not a negative pain, where it's actually just signals because you're in pain. Okay, so um, if you feel pain three days after your exercise, then you've probably done too much. Yeah. You're going to be careful you haven't hurt yourself. That's right. yeah. And so that's why when I make my videos and I do bend, and I'm, I do make and I do bend, um, but I try to reduce how much I bend because it does hurt and it can actually cause more problems with my spine. So um, I know when I do a video if it was a bad one or not, and, and there have been a couple of videos, the concrete video is one you were referring to, uh, which was one of the first few I did. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of bending in that. Yeah, I saw that, yes. Yeah, especially when I did the fast play. Yeah. Uh, and you watch me go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mind you, the, the great thing about videos when you're editing, uh, a five-day video down to 30 minutes, or 28 minutes in this case, uh, looks like there's a lot of work done. Can I tell you, there was a lot of lying down in between those videos and a lot of resting. But anyway, uh, you've got to take it easy when you're doing any kind of exercising. So making the videos has it. Uh, in, a, in a strange kind of way, it becomes some of my exercises. Mm, it's really interesting. Enough. Yeah, really yeah. interesting how that's evolved, yeah. and it keeps me psychologically focused, not to think about my pain. Because the more you think about your pain, yeah. in abstract, the worse it gets. Yeah. That's my experience. Right? Distraction is very, very important as, as a, a way of dealing with kind of positive pain. distractions. Right? Yes. Well, <laughs> even with any kind of <laughs> don't have arguments <laughs> with people. That's not a distraction. That'll work too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's it, but yes, uh, I think that's really really important to to distract yourself from thinking about the pain. Yeah, uh, and that also leads to the emotional side of things, so that you're less likely to feel anxious or depressed about the pain. So I think positive attitude is, is so so important. Taking control of your pain and let the pain. I just look at the messages here, Korga. I wasn't expecting this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, I've just been monetized, and I really appreciate that. Uh, you didn't have to. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, so, um, and, uh, and Anthony English sent me a personal message. I'm not sure what you're meaning, Anthony, what can we do with that? If you can just post me a message and, and we'll reply to it, uh, if you're still on. Um, yeah, so, um, and, uh, yeah, so you've got to stay positive because if you start to stay negative, what actually happens, uh, and hence why I'm saying not to go and, uh, have arguments with people to distract you, because what actually does happen is you will have arguments with everyone in your home. That, that, that is a natural thing because you're in a bad place and they don't know where you are. And don't expect them to. Mm. They don't know where you are. They will see by your pain uh, where you're at eventually, and it takes them a while to get it. 
and, and you've just got to be patient with that. Uh, and the more you explain to them how much you're suffering, the less they listen. Uh, so in other words, <laughs> uh, you're not on your own. I've got to be very clear on this. You're not on your own. <clears throat> I'm a praying man. Um, I, I do <clears throat> believe in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Pardon me. I do believe in Jesus Christ. I do pray. Um, and it does help me a lot. And I do find uh, that that actually helps me to focus my pain a lot. Um, you guys might not be into that. That's fine. Um, but regardless, it does help. And so um, I, I found when I went to the pain clinic that um, there was some people uh, there on very high doses of uh, pain medication, all types of pain medication. There's a lot on the market. It's not just Tarjan or, or yeah, Endo. There's there are, there are other things. things. Yeah. And not just Lyrica. There's other uh, depressant tablets that you can take that actually do a very similar job. And some people will swear by it. Now, personally, I don't go into that because if you miss a day of medication, we put you on a high and a low, which is actually not good. Uh, so I choose not to go on any depressing, uh, depression medication. Um, and saying that, years ago I did go through depression, so I understand what depression is. Uh, and, and, and so uh, once again I learned through my faith uh, how, to, how to overcome that. And so, um, yeah, so uh, I, I think for personally, um, you know, if you stay positive, and it takes a while to build that up, by the way. Don't expect to do that overnight. Yeah. It takes a while to get positive. Um, you and I, 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 I for how three and a half years I was coming to your surgery uh, on, a, on a monthly basis oh, <clears> during my I recovery can't, period. I remember, it felt like that. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a little bit less, but yes. Yeah. You, I think the first two years for yeah, sure. Yeah. And um, you had to say, see, see me go through all the highs and lows. Oh, yeah. and, and even, you know, we had to even discuss my relationship with my wife. And yeah. We, in, in very intimate sense, it's like a two personal thing. That's <laughs> fine, but 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 this was an issue, yeah, right? Absolutely. And so it will put you on the highs and yeah. lows. You will go on the highs and lows. Um, and as as Peter said, it, it, it's not good to talk about these things uh, in in public. But but you will go through these problems. Yeah. You go through these highs and lows. Um, and it's normal. Yeah. It's actually normal. But it's if you stay positive, yeah. you can take it from a normal sense. To a much better uh, level, uh, Mambi. Thank you very much. I just saw what he did. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, he's just uh, he's yeah. done something there. I'm not sure what he's done, but he's done something. Uh, he's uh, done a super chat. I think. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I think you need to work your way through that. As you say, immediately that's all normal. I totally agree with you. Yeah. That you know all those negative things that are occurring in your life, and you have to work your way through to a point where you take control of that pain and realize that. You know, you you're in charge, not it. Yeah, you. yeah, and, yeah. And I think um, it takes time. Yeah. And and talking to to the close people closest to you, your yeah. GP, uh, and uh, sometimes even seeing a psychologist. Sometimes it's necessary. I've got to tell you, yeah. psychologists is on the list for a lot of people. Yeah. You need yeah. to go. Yeah. Because Depends on whether you have that support or not. I yes. You, you, you were lucky enough to have that. I had the support. I didn't need yeah. to go. And you had the faith. And, and I had the faith. And, and and so I've been yeah. to psychologists yeah. in the past, right? Yeah. And I know how it works and how it runs. And so I personally uh, found that I didn't need to go. Yeah. Okay. And, and doctors were still yeah. specialists yeah. were still saying to me, "You may need to explore that." Yeah. Uh, but in my mind, I felt comfortable enough to say, "It's fine." Yeah, it's fine. And though I was monitoring that with you all the way through, I'm thinking, "I know you were." Does, does he need something? <laughs> yeah. But I know you were well supported. And I thought it's, it's good. With my character, and I think you picked it up. I will have some bad days, but most of the time, I was trying to stay jovial. Yeah. Uh, and, and, jail, jail, thank you. <laughs> I'm not in jail. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to blame that on Lyrica. That's a great, it's a great thing to blame on. <laughs> Sorry, no, I made a mistake there. Uh, yeah, so I try to stay jovial, yep. uh, and uh, because not only for my benefit, but more so for the other persons who you're dealing with, because you don't want to bring them down. And I'm sure a couple of times I was very low, and I, I felt that I was bringing you down. I've got to be honest, I felt that. Uh, and so I made a conscious effort every time I went to you, but I keep it as light as possible, but still tell you the problems I'm having. Yeah. And we worked through them, and it was a long period. And, uh, and and I found them, you know, it was quite good. Yeah. So, um, hey, thanks, Corga. I appreciate that. It doesn't it doesn't look like a super chat. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and... Um, uh, what else? Uh, there's a few things I wanted to go through. 
Um, I, that's what I was going to say. Uh, so you went through um, the next stage in my life. So when I did the uh, yeah. videos, I was making all these videos. I'd made the hydrotherapy video, uh, but I didn't release it straight away because uh, editing takes forever, and I was, still, I was still learning how I was going to do all that, and I just finished doing the concrete video. Mm -hmm. Only about a week or two prior. And so when I released the quarter quantum video, the high, the high, the high therapy, therapy video, uh, that night, it was a Friday night, that night, would you believe it, I had gone through the exact same experience of back pain again. And I'm on video saying, go into the hydro pill, that'll save your life, all these kind of things. And I was lying in this couch right here in my recliner and not able to move. And, uh, and for the next two months, and that was back last year in September. I think that's when I released that video. In uh, two months, I had to wait for another decompression. Would you believe it? I was told that it was never going to happen again, but it did happen again. I had to have a second decompression. In this case, what happened? And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the specialist. Also, it would never happen again. Yeah. If, I, if I'm careful. Mm -hmm. And I was careful enough. Mm -hmm. But what had happened, all the bending I was doing, dislodged, because they only operate on L3-4. They did not operate on 4 or 5. And there was damage on L4 or 5 as well, but they thought it was minor. In fact, it wasn't minor. Um, there was a splinter loose. And so a part of the disc had come off and caused another compression, which inflamed the nerve, yeah. then up the spine inflamed. And I had, we knew it was happening, but didn't think it was that big an issue. I had arthritis growth. Uh, and you can explain more about it because I don't understand it, but I had another compression. So the arthritis caused... When, when, my, when I was inflamed, caused another um, exacerbation or wh whatever it's going to be called. Um, and would you believe it, I had another a second operation uh, on uh, Memorance Day, the 11th of the 11th, and I don't think it was 11 o'clock, it was on Memorance Day, on November last year, so I had to have a second operation. And uh, so everything fell apart at that point, and, you know, I wasn't able to mow my grass. I've been doing mowing videos. I'm really trying to regain my grass. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, can you explain more about that? Well, no, what happens is, this is what usually happens, actually. The second one was more typical of what happens to people, is that when you get arthritis, chronic wear and tear in the lower part of your back... Which happens you, around 50 years old for most people. Oh, it can start even earlier than that, but yes, beyond 50 years of age, and, and yeah. it's, it can become more progressive with time, but what yeah. happens is when you get wear and tear with any osteoarthritis, you get things called osteophytes. Osteophytes are where bits of bone grow in response to the wear and tear of the joints as they rub up against each other. These Sorry. can beak. So we just send a message this morning. Okay. Sorry. These can um, beak into the areas where the nerves are, are traveling and traversing. And, you know, they can they will occur very, very gradually. But all you need is something which uh, causes it to become suddenly worse, like in your case, that bit of disc that came off. And then that that's what tips it over. And that's when you need decompression. A lot of people, I'm sure I've got lots of this. You probably have other areas that you're causing the same problem that osteophytes causing. Well, in your, I'm saying your spine. Oh, okay. More than likely. I mean, most people I've been have got some of that. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't cause any, cause any problems because it has happened gradually. And yeah. There's no critical pressure on the nerve. But when you get something else like a bit of disc pushing or that, that's it. It's gone beyond too far, and that's when you need the compression. And yeah. the is what happen. Yeah. And that's what happens to most people when they get this kind of problem. But I'm glad that I had that second operation because... Oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, because they didn't finish the job. Dr. Davison, it was a long procedure. There was a lot of damage in my spine. Yeah. He wasn't able to de uh, decompress or take that uh, that obstruction out from L4-5. And so um, he uh, was... Um, so Dr. Dr. Demidaran identified pretty quickly yeah. uh, that he needed to decompress. Uh, it was... It, it, here in Australia, there's ABC, is it? Uh, the levels of... Uh, the whether oh, you have an operation, operation. yeah, yeah, yeah. ABC. No, so, no, no, category one to three, one to three, okay, category one, one to three. This was a category two, not a category one. The first yeah. one was a category oh, one, or yours is an emergency, yeah. yeah. The yeah. second one was a category two, but yeah. can I tell you the pain factor that I was in is yeah. the same, yeah. No, and that's, I, that's a sad part about it. That was right? after three operations, yeah. oh, sorry, three, not pardon me, three more quarter zones, yeah. That's, that's the sad thing with the Australian, with what happens in Australia. Oftentimes, when you get you can get quite severe pain, and it doesn't, it's not seen as something that needs to be done that urgently. Yeah. Because it's not critical. And yeah. So it just means you have to put up with the pain, which is it's very sad, but I'm yeah. it's a reality. Yeah. And that's why yours took that time to get done. And in fact, yours was pretty quick. Yeah. It could have been much worse. Yeah, I've they were saying six months. Yeah, I've got um, some patients who have been waiting on the public system for about a year. Yeah. So what I end up doing, just in case any of you 
Uh, I'm not sure I did have, uh, I, I do have a health fund. Uh, it is limited. Uh, and so when I went to Dr. Penna mm -hmm. and then he sent me to a specialist, the specialist said, um, checked it and then I rang, uh, sorry, gave me the, the category number, took it to my fund and they said it is covered. So, uh, and uh, so the operation wasn't very expensive for me because I was covered. Uh, and, uh, and the doctor made sure, very, and thank you very much, Dr. Demidara, and he actually made sure there was no uh, out of pocket, yeah. Yeah, no gap. So I thank you very much for that, Dr. Demidaran, and you did a great job. Uh, so the reason I was happy to have the second operation, because the first was not complete. Uh, so now it's complete. I may have to have decompression in the future because of more arthritis, arthritis arthritic growth. Is it yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, who knows? You know, these things happen gradually. And have, as long as you're having more disc issues, yeah. which is what the tip, tips are over, you should be okay. Yeah. As we all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, there's uh, – what I'll do, um, I've got a link below in this live chat. There is a link already for understanding corda equina a bit more clearer. Uh, and also I'll put a link uh, – or I have put a link, I think. Uh, if not, I'll check that. Of the – I think I did. Uh, of the full video of hydrotherapy and uh, and what I went through. So, yeah, so that video is already in this live chat, so you just need to look in the descriptions below. Um, so, yeah, it, it, a crazy journey. Um, I was just going to ask if anyone's got any questions because we're, we're, we're going to uh, finish up in a, in a minute. Uh, if, if anyone with any experiences, uh, if you are watching this live chat after the event, uh, please leave me a comment and I will get back to you uh, and, uh, and and uh, hopefully give you uh, some, uh, you know, some direction. Uh, I, I can't give you advice. I'm not a doctor, but I'll give you some direction of what I think uh, your experience. Yeah, from my experience, what you what, what might help you, maybe. Um, but as you said before, there's many different types of different spinal injuries, yeah. back pains, yeah. uh, chronic back pains. Yeah. Uh, but can I tell you, at the end of the day, they pretty much all feel the same. Mm. They all feel like you're crippled and you yeah. can't move. Oh yeah, you mean the end result? That, that's function. Function is yeah. the same. That's, that's you the are yeah. crippled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, that's uh, the operative word, as you say. We rely a lot on what we do based on on function. I mean, the clinical findings in terms of what we find when we examine you in the history guides us to some degree in terms of investigation. But at the end of the day, it's the function we're aiming for, uh, yeah. which is why you know you as uh, you, you need to sort of look at your life. And the way you live it, and the, the uh, things that you can do to, to make it more positive for yourself. But anyway, yeah, yeah. come through this. It's fine. So, um, Giuseppe, thank you very much, very much for your message. Thank you, Korga. Thank you, Membi. Uh, and thanks for all the other guys who are on. Um, I just wanted to uh, say thanks for your support once again. Uh, and so, you're all on this journey with me. Uh, if you are suffering from this kind of condition, any kind of back spinal condition, any kind of condition that gives you chronic. Um, issues or no, just any kind of anything, anything. Uh, I've got to say that you've got to stay positive and look for the things that are uh, they're going to, they, 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 they are going to um, improve your life. So for me, uh, I've, I've went and bought a tractor, I bought a mower that I can use, I buy equipment uh, that I can afford that helps me uh, to do things that I used to do but I can't do now with my physical state. So there's always a way of finding things, uh, working around things. Uh, whether you get assistance from the government or where you get, uh, you know, some kind of help, there's always another way, a better way. So just keep looking for that. And and you won't, your life won't be the same. It won't be perfect. But can I tell you, my life wasn't perfect before the injury. Yeah. So there's no such thing. So just keep finding ways. Stay positive. Um, and, uh, and and thank you very much. Uh, Corga, thanks very much for your, um, for, for your message and thanks for the live chat, uh, for the super chat. And... Um, Okay, guys, uh, thanks very much, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.